right, speaking of rates, let's take it down to the bank stocks now, because broadly speaking, they were lower today. Morgan Stanley losing more than 4% after its fourth quarter results came in. Goldman Sachs remained a relative bright spot, up about a half a percent or so to end the trading day as well. Today also marked the deadline for public comments on the Fed's proposed changes to bank regulations in the wake of that Silicon Valley bank collapse last spring. The proposal would raise capital requirements for banks with at least $100 billion in assets. But Rebecca, you see cause for concern if those changes take effect because maybe or not, it's not just about the massive banks out there. No, not at all. I mean, what these regulations do is they get a much bigger swath of banks that are going to have to increase the capital they hold. And so the risk is that you get, as Michelle Bowman, Governor Bowman of the Fed put it, a possible cliff effect, that you get banks that are just under this $100 billion in assets mark who either have to shrink their business, so that's not good for the small businesses right. borrowing, or there's going to be mergers. They're going to need to get bigger so they can get economies of scale that helps spread out all these compliance costs, regulatory costs that they're encouraging. So I think that, you know, the regulatory environment for banks right now is difficult. It's particularly difficult for the regional and smaller and community banks because they just don't have the staff or the funds to pay to make sure they can stay on top of these regulations. And it's going to it's going to hamper their businesses. I'm not saying we shouldn't be safe. Of course we should. But it feels like these regulations aren't as tailored as they could be or should be. The small banks, Rebecca. They've been talked about by some folks as a, a catch-up trade. There's been a lot of focus on the J.P. Morgans, the Bank of Americas, the cities, the money center banks out there, and the massive ones. And maybe some undercover banks have been left behind. That was a potential source of alpha. For some, do you think it's still the case? We're no. smid banks. No. I, no. I am. I, I was cautious last year on them. I'm still cautious. You know, we had a big run up in the fourth quarter, basically on the Fed pivot hopes, lower interest costs, reducing liabilities for these banks. But what we're hearing from Waller is that that's not going to happen as quickly as people want. And then at the same time, we have this additional regulatory burden that's coming on. Um, the smaller banks, I think, are going to continue to struggle till we truly get in that easing cycle. And please, Lord, let us have a, co a consumer that's resilient. That's what the small banks need. And until the small banks really stabilize, the small businesses get hurt because most of the small businesses are borrowing from smaller banks. They're all tied together. Uh, Dan, there's been a tailwind over the last few months, maybe even several months now. We had talked for a long time about the inversion of the yield curve, but specifically between two year and 10 mm -hmm. years, uh, a percent or more to the inverted to the downside. It's not even close to that today. It's been uninverting pretty quickly. It's been steepening, so to speak. Yeah. Is that, though, a good tailwind for that bank trade? Do you think it could work if we see interest rates start to behave more normally? Well, I think this speaks to what Rebecca was saying earlier, is that the two-year got more in line with what the Fed Fund's expectations were, right? And that's why we're seeing that re-steepening. But if you look at the 10-year, which is probably more receptive or, or, I mean, sensitive to what growth expectations are, it's kind of stuck here in around 4%. And so, like, to me, I, I, you know, Guy has been kind of detailing this for a while now. I think you're kind of damned if you do, damned if you don't. If the 10-year started to fall that much lower than it got to, what, 3.8% or something like that a few weeks ago, what is that saying about growth? Um, but if we were to see the, the, the two-year kind of rise again, that means that we're kind of pushing out rate cut expectations. What does that say about inflation? So I just think we're in a period where we're going to probably not see that thing back on the other side of the inversion. And uh, Guy has been tracking this. It's going to be the longest inversion in how long? If we make it to February, it'll be the longest since we started recording the data in terms of the inversion. It's not the inversion is the warning sign. It's the re-steepening is when you have to start to worry. And that's where we are now. I mean, historically, if you go back and look, that's when markets actually actually sort of take it on the chin. And in terms of the banks, I'm with Rebecca on this one. If small and regional banks are the lifeblood for small businesses, and if small businesses are slowing down, we were talking about that New York Fed manufacturing number, which was a disaster of the magnitude of nine times worse than what the street was expecting. That's a problem. And if that's a problem, that means the consumer is going to be in trouble. And if the consumer is in trouble, that by definition means the economy is in trouble.